Jeffrey here with NBOTS. Today we're going to go over how to assemble the Raven Ferroweight Kit. This kit is available on uh, www.nbots.com. Retails for $129 uh, unassembled and $159 assembled. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, the 3D printed frame is made out of onyx and has the frame piece, the wedge piece, and a little servo extender. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the servo out of the package. So, in here we're going to use this small servo horn, but we're not going to do that quite yet. We're going to set that aside. Um, we're also going to take the dual speed controller out of the package. So there's a couple of tools I'm going to use today. Um, scissors being one of them. So. so here's the dual speed controller. So, because the go away, cat. I'm busy. Um, my cat's always interested in what I'm doing. So, anyways, the speed controller. We are not going to be using JST connectors. We are going to be using uh, the E-Flight style connector because our battery is an E-Flight style battery. Uh, the reason that we chose this is because the connect having less connectors gives us more space inside of the uh, robot frame itself. So, let me make a little bit of room here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to desolder this connector and we're going to solder this connector. So, I'm uh, there are multiple ways to strip the leads. Um, I have one of these handy things that I picked up at Harbor Freight for like six bucks. Squeeze the trigger and it strips them. Um, you can use whatever method works best for you. But just strip these like so. I like to twist them together, makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so. Uh, I'm using a uh, Heiko soldering iron, but whatever you've got works. Um, clean the tip and just apply a little bit of heat and just solder the connector. So uh, we're not going to use this, so we can set it aside and you can use it for another project or whatever floats your boat. So now we have to solder this to this. Now, it's very important that you get the polarity right. The outside pin on the board the outside pin on the board is a positive. The next pin in is the negative. So, this pin's negative, this pin's positive. I'll show it to you again after I solder it. So, first thing I'm going to do Grab a little bit of solder and I just quickly tin these. And the reason I tin them is so that the strands of the metal don't fray. Um, I also, after I tin it, I use either a pair of scissors or a nice pair of side cutters to trim them so that you don't have excess length. You want them about that long. Okay. So now in a robot frame we are going to have a 
our battery is going to sit in here. Our speed controller is going to sit in there, like so. Okay. So then. Alright, sorry about that. So our battery is going to sit in there. Um, and it is quite a tight fit, but we're going to have this in there, like so. This is going to sit in there, and then the battery will connect like so. Okay, so it is a tight fit, so we're going to have our connector pointing this way. So, when we solder it, we're going to solder it like this. Okay, so if I was soldering this on a bare pad, I would tin the pad first and then tin these and then connect them. Since I already had the other connector on here, this is already tinned. So I'm just going to go ahead and solder it. Now all you need to do, clean the tip off. So you got a nice shiny tip. And remember I'm doing positive on the outside. So just give it a little bit of melt. This is a lot easier to do when you don't have a camera in your way. Just a little bit of heat and a little bit of solder. Come on, focus. Okay. So, that's a fairly good connection. And then we're going to come in, we're going to do the negative. This is the most fiddly part, I promise you. Um, one, once you have the unit soldered, it goes together really fast. Um, so, I've got it soldered there. Now you may notice that it is bridged against this pin here. However, that pin is ground. So ground and ground are okay. Um, this pin here, the red one, can't be bridged against anything else, but this one can. So that's actually fine. Uh, so I have it soldered. So that's going to go like that in there, just like so. Focus again. And the battery is going to go in here, and you'll connect. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead. Power it on. So if you notice, red and red. So black and black. So we're good there. So go ahead. Test power it on. So LED means we're good. So the next thing we're going to do is wire the servo. Now the servo sits in there like this and then comes around like so. Okay. And then comes around and gets connected over here. Okay. So we're actually going to cut a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm cutting it about there. So we don't have room for connectors. Okay, set the connector aside. Pull the servo out now. Now, we're going to pull these apart a little further back, like so. 
I'm going to strip these, we're going to tin them, and we're going to solder them. Now, if this were like a, a, like a e weapon ESC or something like that, instead of a servo, we would connect them here on the back to the throttle channel like that. However, with this one, we're actually connecting these two there to the throttle channel and then this one's going to connect here and the reason we're doing that is that we want this one to receive power from the battery not from the 5 volt regulator um, to give you more lifting power and also um, if you connect them like this it will brown out because um, this servo uh, pulls way more than this is capable of providing so, I'm going to go ahead and strip these real quick. Okay. Give them a little bit of a twist. Normally I have a fan on, but because of the video, I don't have a fan on, so solder with proper ventilation. Um, so now I trim these, just like I trim the other ones, so they're nice and short. Okay, so... Now I'm going to solder these. So we're going to solder it to the channel that's labeled throttle. So the orange wire is going to go here. We're going to skip this one and then the brown wire is going to connect here. Okay. So, if you remember, we're sitting in there like this, so the wire is going to come in in this direction, okay? So, we're going to solder them this way. So, we already tinned these, so now I'm going to prepare these pads, and all I do for that so I just take a little bit of dot just like that so if you look here I just put a little bump on there and that's so that we have something to stick to if you don't prepare it ahead of time it just gets really messy and doesn't work very well so Now I'm going to solder these connectors, just apply a little bit of heat, okay, that one's done, and the second one, just same deal, apply a little bit of heat, so now I've got my signal wire and my ground wire connected, just leaves this wire. Now this one's probably going to be the most difficult one to solder, um, because I've got this one already connected to it. And just put it on the side like that, give it a little bit of heat, you don't want to give it too much because it'll desolder the other one. So 
so it's connected. So that's our main deal right there. Not included part. Um, I'm going to bind. I'm going to bind it now, and I'm going to do that for a very important reason, which I will show you in a moment. Okay. So, in order to bind, this is a little bit tricky for one person. Um, it can be done, as I will show you. Uh, we don't solder. Okay. So the bind pins are these square ones right here and right here. Now normally you would have pins soldered on it and you'd connect it and then it would enter bind mode. Now that's a lot of hassle. It's not really worth doing it that way. Um, there are better ways to do it. Well. What I like to do, see where uh, having uh, multiple hands for this would be easy. So I get it almost connected. Okay. I'm just pulling these slightly out of the way. And I use my side cutters to bridge the pins. Okay. Like so. They just have to be touching. You don't have to like squeeze real hard or anything. And then I apply power. Okay. I see the light's blinking. So I'm in bind mode. So I can set this aside. So in this case I'm using the MLP for DSM blade transmitter. Um, these are re relatively inexpensive on eBay. Um, so you look at the binding procedure. Um, so, plug in the flight battery, but that's not really applied to us. Push the left stick directly down into the case while switching the transmitter on. You'll feel a click. Release the stick and move the throttle to the lowest position. If you entered bind mode correctly, you'll hear a series of beeps from the transmitter and the LED on the transmitter blink. After f approximately 5 to 10 seconds, you should now have full control and function. Okay, so, we're going to push this stick down. Here it clicks, and then we're going to go to the lowest position. So pushing the stick down, powering it on, and going to the lowest position. Okay, so now, I don't know if you heard it, but the servo moved. Okay, so now the servo, I don't know if you can see that, the servo is moving. So I, I am effectively bound. Now I don't have any motors connected to it, so I can't test the motors yet. But I need to do this one first. So now we're going to move this all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to unplug the battery. Okay. I can turn this off now. So now... Go back to this. Okay, so we're not going to use the mounting screws. We're not going to use that one. We're not going to use this one. We're not going to use this one. So we're going to have this. And that's going to be glued in there. Um, but before we do that, we're going to attach it. So, this sits in here, like so. So we need to make sure that we have the servo arm on a spot that gives you ample clearance. 
And you want to be careful not to twist this at all when you attach it. Probably want it next one over. Yeah, right one. Okay, so I just pushed it on there. It's pointed slightly downward. Yours may be a little bit different, uh, but you want it to be relatively close. So now, if I set this in there and hold it down, and I just set this in there, if you notice, we're relatively low, but we're still clear, okay? So that's what you want. So that's great. So now, I'm going to pull this out. screw set it in there tighten it down all the way. So, now as far as glue goes, um, I would highly recommend using 5 minute epoxy. Um, it's a lot stronger. Uh, I'm going to actually use hot glue, which also does work quite well. Um, however, it doesn't quite have the same strength as 5 minute epoxy. Um, but whatever you feel more comfortable with, um, both work. Uh, I've not had an arm come off. Um, the arm, um, you, when you're using it, you don't want to actually f like physically force it when it's powered because um, this does have metal gears, but they are small, so you can strip them out and break the servo. Um, in combat, that really won't happen because the weight of these is so small that it's not that much force um, even if it's like dropped on it or whatever but you can physically force this for way more than the servo is rated for so you don't want to force it with your hand if it's if it's powered and like fighting you. I'll, I'll show you what I mean later so and um, we're gonna attach this bit now so hot glue gun just put a little bit in there Now, I'm pushing it open. I'll make sure it's seated nice and good. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Just because. Okay. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And move on to these. So, got the wheels. Now, I'm not going to glue these, but if you're using this for more than just playing around, I would highly recommend that you glue the tire to the frame. And to do that, I would again use a little bit of 5-minute epoxy in there. And then they'll never come apart. Um, but a little bit of super glue would also work. Um, I wouldn't use hot glue for this because um, that would just get messy and probably not work out too well. So, attach that. Give this a little bit of time to set up. So, now, alright. I'm going to power it back on, just to kind of double check things here, make sure that I've got this on here the way I want it. So power it. Okay, 
So it moves to the down position, which is where we want it. Okay. So now, move it all the way to the extent. That's the range of travel that we would really like to have. I don't know if you can hear that. It's got a little bit of buzzing. So I'm just going to hit the up trim a couple times. Now you hear it stop buzzing. That's where we want it. We don't want it to be fighting constantly against itself. So. So that's good. That's, that's where we want it. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn it off again. Um, it doesn't matter where the... I just bumped the stick. So I disconnected it. Turned my radio off. I'm done with that for a little while now. So now... I'm just going to put a little smidgen of glue on here. Um, again, if you want to use 5-minute epoxy, that would also work. Um, push that in there. Hold it for a minute. Let the glue do its thing. Okay. So now we've installed the servo. Okay. So, now we're going to move on and we're going to do the motors. Now, I have a diagram that should be, make it easier for everybody. So, the dual speed controller sits in there like this. So this view is looking at the speed controller as it is. So A, B, C, D. Okay. So now if you look at the motors, hopefully I can show it. All right. Fantastic. One of the sides is marked with a plus. So this is your positive and this is your negative. Okay. Now, because of the manufacturers of the motors, this may not work for you. Um, you may have to switch the pins, um, but I'll cover that. Um, that's covered in the dual speed controller setup. Um, you may have to swap a pin. Um, it's not a big deal, um, but it, for most cases, this should work, and we'll, we'll see how it works on this one. Um, so now, included in the kit is some wire. So, the motors just slide in like so. Just giving you an idea how much wire you need. Okay. okay. And so, the speed controller sitting like this. Okay. So, we need. approximately that much wire. Okay. Give you an idea. And we need four pieces. So we're going to go ahead because the wire is about the same for both sides. So Doesn't have to be exact. Um, okay, so I got a little bit of extra wire, set that aside. Now I'm going to get both ends of these. Okay. So, 
Now, twist them together. My cat says hello again. Um, okay, so I twisted all the wires together. Now we're going to come back. Okay, and I'm going to just tin all four wires on both sides. So Make sure that you solder on a surface that you uh, don't terribly care about. Now I'm going to pull the motors out and I'm going to tin the tabs on the motor. Now there's plastic on these motors so you don't want to hold your soldering iron on there for too long. Um, the longer you hold it on there the more the plastic will melt. So you just want to touch the tab and just done. Okay. I have the tabs all soldered. Okay. So now I'm going to connect the wires to the tabs. Now that one's good. That one's a little too long. And I trimmed up these wires and I'm going to solder them. Now again, we don't want to melt the plastic, so we're just going to tap it. It's like just a little bit of tap and then it's done. So I set it on top, I touch it, as soon as it melts I pull it away. And get a nice clean solder joint. So now I'm going to side it the other side. Okay, so I kind of messed up there. I had it and then I let it go. So if you do that, if you, if you, you like miss it, you just pull away and let it set and then you try again after a few seconds. Um, if you just keep at it and keep fiddling with it, that's how you melt the plastic. So, I'll set it back on there. Check my solder. And that one's good. Okay. So I've got, I'm actually going to retin those I think because I goofed the length uh, but okay so just set it on top and if 
finally. Good. Now, I'm kind of goofed here when I cut my wires and I didn't cut them even. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shorten this just a tad. Okay. And then just retin this one wire. I'm going to do the same thing on the other one, too. So that one's good. I goofed on this one, too. So... So now I've got both of these soldered. So I'm going to look at our chart again. So this sits like here. Okay. So I'm actually kind of stuck to this, but we'll set it aside for now. Uh, probably shouldn't glue that until after your motors are done. Um, that was kind of stupid of me. Um, so you just pick a motor to be left or right. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to pick this to be the left motor. So it's going to go here and here. I'm going to look at the motor. Okay, so this one here. See right, right here? It's got the positive. Okay. So that one is going to go here. Okay. Before we do that, we're going to tin these, because if you don't tin them, it gets a lot harder, okay? Okay, so now they're tinned. No bridges, looks good. Right. So, now again, this side is plus. So this is the left motor, plus, so it's gonna go here, okay? So. Minus motor, uh, the minus tab goes right next to it. So done. Oh, now see how that go too soon. I gotta okay, now it's done. Okay. So now I gotta do the right motor. So we're just gonna look at this. So this one's positive, okay. So on the right motor, positive goes to C, so it goes there. Now you may have noticed that there are holes in the pad. Um, and then I'm not putting it into the hole, I'm putting it on top of the hole. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's a lot easier to solder. Um, the holes are really meant if you use, like, you can connect pins like this. Um, they have terminal blocks. I highly recommend that you don't do that and do direct soldering. But I put the pinholes in there on the design 
in case someone wanted to do that. Um, I know a couple people have. So, now I have all four motors soldered. I got the bottom, make sure I didn't use too much solder. If you use too much solder, sometimes they'll bridge. Um, what I like doing is I'll just come back and even it out, the soldering iron. Um, there's no reason to do this other than aesthetics, but I do it anyways. <clears throat> so now, we can set this in there and go, this one is our left motor, so it goes over here. Now this isn't permanent, don't, by all means, don't glue it yet. Um, you're going to want to replace these, so you're going to use minimal amount of glue, um, just hot glue. So now I'm going to put the wheels on, just to make things more interesting. Okay. Put the other wheel on. You want to avoid... taking the wheel off and on and off and on and off and on because then they'll actually get weaker. Um, so now I've got those connected. Um, I'm going to um, put this on a block. Okay, I'll actually face it away from me. I turned on my transmitter and now I'm going to power it. Okay. that out of the way again. So now, oh bugger. Okay, so like I was saying, not always do you get what you want. Um, and that's because of the, the tolerances for the motor. Sometimes the positive is actually backwards and it's just the nature of the beast with these. So if I push forward, I got one going backwards and one going forwards. I push backwards, I got that. Okay, so I'm essentially 90 degrees rotated from what I want. Um, so now I'm going to disconnect the power. Okay. And to find it easier to do the motor, I'm going to grab one of them. And I'm going to inevitably pick wrong because it's just the way of the world. This is something that once you set it up, it's set up, but it does take a little bit of patience. Um, okay. So now I swapped these pins. I'm going to do it again. On, attach the battery. Okay, so now when I push forward, it goes backwards. Backwards is forwards. So I'm going to do this. It should remedy that. Forward, backward. Okay, so this is the slightly frustrating part. So now these are backwards. Now if you have a radio that's better than this this one, this is a very entry level radio. Um, you can actually swap the channels um, in your radio. Um, I could do a video later showing that, uh, but for now I'm showing how to set it up on this one. So now I have to, to change it because I have forward and backwards right, okay, but left and right are reversed. So now, basically, I have to swap this one back to the way it was, and I have to swap this one. Okay, so it is a bit of work, 
Um, but it's one of those things that you can't really do it without testing. So, just pop that one off. It's good soldering practice though, so rotate that around. Good, so that one goes back. And now I pull this one out. Decider one, decider the other. Having a pair of helping hands, um, the like little alligator clip deals, would be beneficial. I've gone so long without them that I just, I'm used to doing it this way. Um, so now, alright, power back on. backwards over. So now we're going to switch these again back to the way that they were and it should So now we got forward, backward, left, right. Okay, so forward, backward, left, right. And then, you know, of course we've got that too. So now it's wired correctly. So, good job. Um, I guess I uh, have a little bit more to this than I had. So, I showed you how to wire, how to troubleshoot the what direction makes it go what direction, um, which is good, I guess. So, I now have the motors wired and I have the servo wired. So now we've got one more th thing to wire, and that's the LED. So. This one's nice and easy. So the LED is going to go in this hole. We may actually have to drill it out. Um, All right, so if you have a prototype kit, um, you're gonna have to drill that out because I didn't drill it out. However, on future kits, I will drill that out and it'll be hunky dory. So that goes in there. Um, now we can wire this a couple different ways. Um, we could wire it directly to the power here. Um, I would highly recommend against that. Or we can wire it to this, which is what I would recommend. So, um, this is going to sit in there, like so. So then we just come over, and we can pick anyone in this row, and anyone in this row. So black, and then the red one goes in the middle. Um, so, I'm just going to trim them. Okay, like so again, you got a bit extra wire. Do with as you please. Uh, so. Trimmed them. Twist them together.
in the wires. Sit out. I'm going to trim these down a little short. Take the pins and put a little dot. I'm choosing the solder mine to the, this one here. Um, again, you can pick any in the, in the row. Um, I would pick one that's further back, like I did. Just a little dot. And another little dot. And that's soldered in. Now I'm just going to go ahead and apply power again. Um, make sure that everything's going right, and we have power. Um, now, this is important to notice. Um, see how it's blinking? Um, that is okay. Um, if the... So, see, I still have control. Okay. So, if this is blinking, all that means is that it, it sparked when I connected it. So, it, the receiver detected a brown out condition um, which was caused when I plugged it in where it had power and then it didn't have power and then it had power really really fast um, when you plugged it in. So that's okay. Um, solid is okay too. Um, so um, something else I'm going to cover right now uh, while I've got it is how to calibrate the speed controller. So you see these pins here? You should have one of these. Um, it should come plugged in. I unplugged it right in the beginning of the video. Um, so you plug that in to calibrate it. And I have two modes. Um, so let me set this on blocks so I can show you. Okay, so the blue LED should always be on. When the blue LED is on, that means that everything is good. If it's blinking or blinking fast, um, then there's you're either in calibration mode or there's been a calibration problem and you need to calibrate. Um, so solid is good. Um, if you're running something else and you're running it and this LED for whatever reason isn't solid, um, that means that you're drawing too much current um, from the voltage regulator and you need to use a battery eliminator circuit. Now as long as you wire this the way that I showed, um, everything will be fine. So in order to enter calibration mode, you hit the button. Okay, now see how it's blinking? So you want to center your trims. In this case, we have digital trims. Everything's centered. So without touching it, I'm going to hit the button again. And see it's solid. So now, um, I was in mixed mode. Now I'm in single mode. So if I push the stick forward, one motor moves back, the other motor, the same motor moves in the other direction. Okay, so that's forward and backwards on the radio. Then if I do left and right, I get this one. So if you want to do your own mixing uh, on your radio. This radio doesn't have mixing. Uh, but if you wanted to do mixing on your own radio, then you would put it in that mode. Now to switch back, I just enter calibration mode and exit calibration mode, and now both go. Now one of the neat things that you can do with this is you can make an invert switch. So if you do mixing, like I have it set up now, and then you do mixing on your radio attached to a switch, you can set it so that the forward and backwards, you do minus 100%, minus 100% on elevator. And what that'll do is when you activate on the radio, the switch, your forwards and backwards will change. So that will enable you to drive upside down. Now on a model like this, it's not really needed because this will self-write, uh, but um, that's an option that you can have in the future. Alright, so I'm going to remove power from this. So now, I'm wired correctly and I have one more thing to do. And that's attached to this. Okay, so Got all these holes here, all these holes, all these holes here, and then there's also a hole in the side of this, and there's a hole in the side of this. So 
So what we're going to do, I'm actually going to take that out for a moment. So you're going to take your, your Kevlar thread, and you're going to thread this. Uh, so, hang on a second. So there's a couple different ways to thread it. Um, I find the way that I'm going to show you is probably the most aesthetically pleasing and it also works really well. So you go, I went in this way, and then I'm going to come up and I'm going to go on top, okay? So. Um, I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra, okay? So this is gonna be my the end of my string. So I'm taking the other end, I'm gonna come across the top, and go back through this hole, okay? So that is gonna get me what amounts to figure eight, okay? So then I'm going to go from the top, back through the bottom hole, okay, pull this tight, and then I'm going to go across to the next hole, okay. I'm going to go underneath, okay, so then we're going to go through the top. That's our figure eight. Come back in through the bottom. Okay. So now we have our figure eight. We're going to go. again. So now we're on to the next hole. So we're going to go from the top. And don't worry about doing this super tight. You can cinch it up when you're done. Um, so now we can go through there. Come back to the bottom. move on to the next hole.
Okay, so now I've completed my first row. So now it's a good time to like kind of cinch things up a little bit and just give it a nice little tug and pull it around. Now you don't want it super tight, you just want it to be kind of snug. So that's that's good there how I have it. So now we're going to go, these two are get tied together. So we're going to go back. How we're going to do that is we're going to come back through this last hole. Okay. And then we're going to go across to the next hole. Okay. And then back again If you had something like a sewing needle, this would go a lot quicker. Um, you don't need one, it just would make it faster. Um, okay, so then lastly, you go through. Alright, that hole. So now I tighten this one here. And you tighten this one here. Now I'm going to actually go under and back through again. Okay. So that my two strings are right next to each other. Okay. So now this is, you know, pretty snug. So now. Tighten a nice little knot. Okay. okay. Now come in with a pair of scissors. I believe a little bit of tail on there, but Now you've got your cover. Now, you got one little bit to do here. So, if you look there, you've got a bit of distance between here. So what you want is it's thread through the hole here, okay, and the uh, thread through the hole in here, and you want just probably about there. What this does, and this serves an important purpose is it prevents the this from going back too far but it also okay so it prevents it from going back too far but it also brings it closed um, so now I'm going to power it back on at my radio on. I'm just going to pull this out through the side uh, just to simplify things. Um, okay, got power on. And yeah, bumped it. So 
So that's what you want. Okay. Everything's moving nice and easy. It's pulling itself back down. That's great. So disconnect power. Now we can begin final assembly. So this one, I'm going to trim. Okay. Okay. Now it would be a good idea to bring a little bit of uh, Kevlar thread. Um, regular string would work too. I'd avoid fishing line um, unless it's like a Kevlar stranded type thing. I wouldn't use monofilament. Um, now you could put a little dot of glue in each one of these. Um, that way if it gets cut it won't completely unravel. However there's enough here that even if it does get cut, odds are pretty good that it's going to stick together. Um, so um, now we're going to put this back together. Now the motors out so before I get too far on this I'm gonna turn it back on and make sure that I have the motors on the right side so forward which I do okay So, now these will be a little bit of a tight fit to get in there, okay. Now that we're doing final assembly, you want to put a little bit of hot glue, not epoxy or anything else, hot glue is the best for this, and just put a little bit of a dab right there and right there. On both motors. Now what this does is it holds the motor in place but you can also easily peel the plastic off the hot glue off and replace them should you break them um, and if you get hit hard um, there's a chance that the hot glue will flex and or break um, and that will enable it to not if the hot glue breaks oops if the hot glue breaks instead of the motor um, even though your wheel will bounce up and down, you still will have movement. So that's um, that's a good deal. Um, anytime you can retain movement, even if it's um, at the price of a little bit of maneuverability, you know, if it breaks, you're screwed. So um, now I'm just gonna hot glue everything in place. Um, so I put a little dot of hot glue on there. There shouldn't be anything on this side. So I'm gonna put this is just tacking things down now. Um, all right, on the other side. So, as you can see, the wires are quite tight in here. Um, so, this 
this is why we went with the micro uh, connector instead of the other one. So now as you can see everything does fit um, it isn't only just fit um, you'll have to play around with it a little bit to fit but that's the general orientation of how I fit everything together and I can close this up so then this is relatively flush so, So everything's good there. Just leave your connector on top so you can disconnect it. Um, I actually uh, glue everything in. Um, which does mean that you're limited to this one battery. It will give you quite a bit of time between charges, um, so it's not a huge deal that it's glued in. Um, and you only tack it you more, less is more. Uh, so um, I'm just going to tack it right there, and then I'm going to tack the corner right here just a little bit. I'm going to tack this corner right here. And then I'm going to tack the LED. Okay. So that's that. Now, grab a scale. So, the Raven Fairy Weight Kit is a little underweight um, and that is intentional so place this on the scale um, it comes in at right around 130 oops right around 130 grams okay so the reason that I did that is because some people are going to want to swap these wheels out and some people might want to put like a, pe a little piece of sheet metal or something on here um, and glue it down or screw it down or you know whatever there's a couple different ways to do it so I gave them that extra little bit of weight now these two pockets up in front um, if you don't make changes what you can do I got another one here um, this is my first prototype um, you can take you know little bits of whatever metal and just glue them in um, and that will um, give you a little bit more weight further forward, uh, which is where you want to put the weight, if at all uh, possible. And uh, that concludes it. That's everything, I think. Um, let me just plug this in, you know, and it... I'll demonstrate that one more time. Okay, and then you can push it down like that. So everything in here is just tacked in, so it holds pretty nicely. That can close off. That's the uh, Raven Fairy Way. Now last thing that I'm going to mention before I go is that you want to avoid forcing the wedge. So like, it's under power right now. You don't want to push on this. Because if you push on it too hard, you can strip that the internal gears of the motor out. Uh, now, you know, it'll... You know, it can lift stuff. I shouldn't have put something around on it. But... You know, it has no problem lifting things. But 
if you force that, you, the um, it is only a micro servo, so it doesn't have as big a durability as a standard servo was. The problem with standard servos is it would never fit in something this small. Um, so that's why uh, we went with that. This is the strongest servo that we found. We did look at multiple servos before we got it, um, and uh, that's that. So if you want to turn it off, you just open the wedge up, pull your little harness out, and disconnect it. Notice that I held both sides of the connector, because um, you don't want to yank on this too hard. Uh, and that's that. Thanks for watching.